Hello everybody. So anyway, here is an update I was going to give you on the piece of cardboard that I took with me on vacation. The camera isn't shaking too much here. I'm not holding it with a tripod or anything. I'm just kind of holding it in my hand. So I'm going to show you. This is the piece of cardboard and the whole purpose behind this piece of cardboard was I've got this little part right in here. I'm going to go around and show it from a different angle that is kind of difficult to deal with if I want to spread out a sleeping bag or a cushion and sleep in the SUV or crossover as they call it but if I take this piece of cardboard and put right about here then it's flat enough and I can end up unrolling my mattress here like so and go to the other side and do it the rest of the way and this works out pretty good it solves about 90 percent of the problem because that is an odd place right there and I tried Last time I used this as a camper kind of thing, I stuffed a bunch of stuff underneath there and tried to get it high enough, but it was not comfortable. And this solved about 90% of the problem. Now, I wouldn't say it was perfect because I just kind of slapped it together, and it's got these pieces of wood in between, and I could still feel a little bit of that, although it wasn't hardly noticeable at all. Maybe about two times for a few minutes it kind of was a pain to deal with, but then I just adjust a little bit, so... What I've got now is I've got a piece of thin underlayment that I'm going to cut to this exact size since I know it works. The other thing, amazingly, um, that worked really well was the fact that while everybody else was sleeping in the tents during the meetup, in the morning they would wake up and the tents would be full of humidity and if they touched any place in the tent, as usual, it leaks and all the, the water comes in. I was kind of worried that inside my Jeep that I would get a lot of humidity too, but I didn't. It stayed nice and dry, it was comfortable. Even when the days were hot, all I would do is just open that door there and this door here that's open right now, wait about five minutes for all the heat to leave, close the door back again, and it was comfortable. It was not too hot, not too damp, anything. I mean, I suppose if the weather was any warmer than what it was and stayed like 90 degrees at night, I would have to come up with a system to maybe uh, roll these windows down partly and have some kind of a screen in there of some type to get some cross flow ventilation. The other big problem too was my sleeping bag. It has one of those kind of, I don't know what you would call it, satin or silk kind of uh, uh, covers uh, the outside material on it instead of being like canvas like. My, my previous sleeping bag had like a canvas outside lining whereas this one has some type of a um, satin type of lining on the outside so it kept sliding down so but you know the other thing was um, I just put it on there to try and I didn't end up using it anyway because I was perfectly comfortable without the sleeping bag so in the future I might not even bring the sleeping bag along I might just bring a blanket or two maybe a blanket and a comforter and then what I ended up doing and I'll probably do with the blanket or the comforter if it's warm is just uh, slid them back over there in case I needed to have access to them but otherwise the sleeping arrangements I think they were much better than a tent really so I really like this a lot. So yeah, that's the updates of what's going on with that piece of cardboard that I brought along. And it uh, gave me enough information to know now I can just take the piece. And I will show you the piece I'm going to use. A friend of mine works in construction. I said if you can get a hold of some floor underlayment, I would like a piece of that. At least I need it to be at least two foot wide. And here it is. I've even marked it for where I'm going to cut it. You can probably see the mark right there that I made on it. So it's about three foot wide, so I'm going to cut it to two feet and about 40 inches long, approximately. So yeah, that's the answer to that about the cardboard and everything. Oh, let me also show you. I've got all the stuff, all the parts from the trailer back here ready to go back together. That'll be a project probably for about a week or so. First, I want to paint these. I got a really great deal on paint, too. Oh, I also already started putting together the springs on the axle there. So they're already back in place and tight, and so it's just a matter now of reassembling the deck frame. But here's some paint I got a hold of. 99 cents a can. Crazy sale days at the Menards. But your only choices were black or white. I thought it was, when I first looked at the ad, I thought it was any kind of Rust-Oleum paint, but no. Nope. So guess what? For 99 cents a can, instead of the normal $3.59 a can, the trailer is going to be black instead of red. It's not that important. The important thing is to save the money and uh I don't think the trailer cares whether it's uh, black, white, red, blue, whatever. Definitely wasn't going to paint it white, though. But, yeah, since the choice was black, I decided to go with black. And uh, for $0.99 cents a can, that's a total of 10 bucks. So not a bad deal at all. Plus, I will next week possibly start working on the uh, cabinet fronts. I don't know if I'll post that or not. If there's some interest or something, I'll 
post on the fact I'm making uh, aspen, aspen wood with a little bit of stain to make it not quite so light. My wife, wife likes the natural, it's called natural stain, but I'm going to be putting cabinet fronts in the kitchen cabinets. So that's about all for now. Just want to get everybody updated on what's going on. So catch you later.